You're listening to the Becoming More Me podcast with me, Teresa Lear Levine. You're already enough, but if you're anything like me, you thrive when you're stretching and developing yourself, creating more of the person you feel called to be. This podcast is here to inspire and support you. Let's release the negative, reinforce the positive, and elevate our vibe together as we tap into our limitless potential to transform and grow. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Becoming More Me. I'm happy to have Lisa Garner here with me this week as my guest coming to us all the way from the UK and Manchester. She is a hypnotherapist that specializes in RTT, which combines hypnotherapy with CBT and NLP for fast and effective therapy. Uh, It's excellent for fears, phobias, self-esteem, weight loss, fertility, OCD, and anxiety, to name a few of the things. And as many of you know, and Lisa probably doesn't even know this yet, I'm actually completing the same certification um, right now. So um, I've been a huge fan of hypnotherapy for ages, um, have you know been helped in myself by it. And that was the thing that I chose for 2023 to up-level becoming more me with hypnotherapy. And that was not intended to rhyme the way that it did, but it goes together quite well. So um, I've, I've always been a huge fan of of the subconscious mind and just shedding more light on the power of this work. I've had um, other hypnotherapists on the show before, um, episode 34, I had my friend Lindsay Robinson from the High Vibe Minute podcast on, and it's just something I've geeked out on for so long that having the opportunity to speak with Lisa just seemed like it would be a fun conversation and we'd have a lot of um, a lot of fun exploring uh, this from a new perspective and getting to hear Lisa's story as well. So welcome to the show, Lisa. I'm glad you made the time to be here today. Thank you so much. And I'm absolutely honored to be on the show. I've um, I've been listening to it and just getting some absolute gems from it. So I'm really pleased to be joining you and your lovely listeners. Well, thank you so much. I love getting to know my guests a bit on a personal basis before we dive into uh, talking shop and stuff. So tell me a little bit about you. Obviously, you're from Manchester um, or you live there now. Maybe you're not. Where, tell us where you're from. Tell us about your family, what you enjoy doing when you're not working and all that good stuff. Excellent. So I'm originally from the northeast of England, um, a little town called Hartlepool. Um, I live in Manchester now because I met my husband at uni and he's a mank, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like a, a oasis, <laughs> same area. Um, and yeah, we met at uni, moved to Manchester. Um, I've still got my mum still lives in the northeast, so we do visit quite regularly. Um, and yeah, we've got two kids, um, India, who's 13 and Etienne, who is eight. And um, yeah, so I I really just fell in love with hypnotherapy because it was part of a neuro linguistic programming course that I did. And it was like two days of just absolute heaven. Um, so that that got me into that world originally. But yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Absolutely. And I know you've had quite the journey with that led you to hypnotherapy and that um, you had mentioned that infertility was a big catalyst for you. Can you tell me more about like that difficult time in your life and how you worked through it? Obviously you have two beautiful kids now. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I do not take that for granted at all. I, I just feel so blessed because to me and my husband spent three years trying to get pregnant and we were we were absolutely devastated you know we were you know for those of people who were listening who were in that situation like my heart goes out to anyone in that situation because obviously like you have a monthly reminder that you are not having that baby (laughs) so I it's so hard it's so tough and like I I just love kids as well so it was it was a real real struggle and I always thought I was like very attuned to like, you know, alternative therapy. And like I used to have Reiki and I had reflexology and I I was going really down the medical route. Um, I had and I found out I had endometriosis when we had all the tests done, um, which obviously is very challenging when you're trying to get pregnant. Um, And I was going down all that medical route. I wasn't doing anything with my mind to help myself to get pregnant I completely neglected my mind in the process and all I could think about is my body's not working 
to a really good friend of mine when I was I was literally booked in to have laser surgery we call it like a laparoscopy you know you have the, the mm-hmm. surgery and you have the um the endometriosis lasered off and a really good friend of, my, of mine um there's two books that I read when I was waiting to have the operation um Jack Canfield Chicken Soup for the Soul to put me in a good frame of mind um he's amazing and then the other one was The Secret she was like please read The Secret she said I'm so worried about the words that you're saying to yourself and I was like it like it really struck a chord with me I was like what have I been saying to myself so basically I'd spent three years of my life saying you will never get pregnant it just won't happen for you everyone else get pregnant it will you will never be you you won't get pregnant so I realized I was actually after reading the secret it it really just unlocked something for me and I was thinking wow this is I've been like really not using my mind at all to help I've been trying everything else I mean all the other sorts of things you could think about medically, but just nothing with my mind. So I read The Secret and then I went round and told everybody, I will be pregnant in one month's time after this operation. And obviously, as you can imagine, my husband and my friends and my family were so worried. They were like, oh my God. They were thinking that you were delusional and it was not possible and they weren't using their minds to help you absolutely and that's that's normal isn't it like you see your rational mind kicks in and you know the trying to avoid pain and trying to be risk averse all they were doing that so like it was out of the goodness of their heart but they were trying to they were almost out of their kindness sabotaging like sabotaging where I was because I was in this great place and I was like so I, I did something behind everyone's back I went to a baby shop and I bought a baby grow and honestly I was like checking out the CCTV going in thinking if anybody sees me buying a baby grow I'll just be so embarrassed um because obviously as someone who'd been trying for three years I just thought I'm such a fraud like what am I doing in this shop so I bought this beautiful baby grow and I said to myself my baby's gonna wear this and in, in one month I'm gonna be pregnant and anyway it it really was amazing because the month after the operation I did the pregnancy test and I sat on the side of the bath and I just cried my little heart out I've, I never thought I'd see like the stick showing a positive so you can imagine it was just pure relation and then it was hang on a minute how powerful is this mind like this is great stuff why did nobody tell me this before and it just unlocked like this just passion for learning about the mind and I was like I need to know more this is so powerful this stuff so yeah yeah, that, that really started it for me I can see how I mean learning is is can be powerful when we take the action that aligns with it for sure and you talked about, you know, learning being one of the best um, well-being methods um, when we were corresponding on email and um, how that really helped you when your dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which I'm sorry to hear that. Um, you. Is your dad still with us? He's not. He has passed now. But yeah, I'm in a really good place to talk about him um, because I feel like so. And I've and I've heard your podcast and, and I feel like we're really aligned on this everything is learning isn't it mm-hmm. and everything it's like you can be in the darkest most traumatic time and I mean in the very early stages of my dad's diagnosis like I was in such a very sad place because I just had my son I, you know you, I was a new mom sleepless night and I'd had the diagnosis about my dad and, and I'd stick crying in the dark, feeding him on a night, just thinking, oh, I'm devastated. I was so sad about the loss of of his mind that I'd slowly we're going to lose pieces of his mind. Um, and in order to cope with that, I'd done the I'd I'd done some learning. Um, I'd actually started on like lots of reading, and um, but then I went, okay, I'm doing neuro-linguistic programming which led to actually the hypnotherapy, um, which I've been seeking out since The Secret and since this amazing stuff with the fertility in the mind. So I did that and that just unlocked some more really cool, amazing stuff. 
and I I got really spiritual as well. I, I like I, I grew up Catholic, but I I wasn't an amazing Catholic. <laughs> I didn't follow like the strict religious rules of church and everything like this. I can relate I, with that. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yeah. So I've kind of always been spiritual and I, I believe in something else, but like I, I wasn't into all the rules. I was like, yeah, yep. I, I can't. I know there's something else in in my heart. But I was reading lots of stuff about the afterlife, lots of gorgeous near death experiences that people had had, and then I just started taking it the steps further. I used a lot of Reiki, so I went to see the mo- this beautiful woman. Honestly, like. She was much older than me, but I couldn't even put an age on her because she was just beautiful inside and out. And she was this amazing Reiki healer. And every time I got really, really sad, I'd go and see her and I'd say, look, she called Jennifer Rose. I'd be like, Jennifer Rose, I'm going to just like probably cry all the way through this Reiki session. And she's like, great. <laughs> You're meant to cry. Oh, yeah. So then I was like, Jennifer Rose? I think I need to do Reiki because every time I had Reiki, I, my hands got really, really warm. And she was like, you were a healer, Lisa, you were a healer. Um, and I always felt like that was, I was very like that as a child as well. I was always the person everyone went to. I was always very therapeutic with people, very caring of people. And they, I think there's something about giving, isn't there? And like Reiki is like such a great thing to to give um and to receive so yeah I went down I learned Reiki as well um and I did use Reiki um with my dad um with his Alzheimer's you know just to like if he was in times of because sometimes when you've got Alzheimer's you can get a little bit manic and you can get like very agitated so Reiki really helped with that um and yeah, then I just, I, I was just constantly seeking. I was on Mind Valley all the time, looking at what, what are the guys on Mind Valley like? Who are they recommending? And then I just had this taster session, like for Marissa Peer, um, who, I mean, if for those who don't know her, she's like this phenomenal, like she's the UK's top hypnotherapist and also one of the top in the world. Absolutely. Globally. And she is so there's just something so wonderful about her and I was hooked with her I was like she makes perfect sense she's speaking directly to my soul of like who I am as a person and I was like whatever this costs whatever it takes I, I, I've got to do rapid transformational therapy because but the fact that it's hypnotherapy and NLP which I'd done both of yeah, and yeah. CBT together I was just like this really really resonates with me and it's so powerful and it's been so life-changing for me and it really the learning helped me to feel like something positive was coming from such a dark traumatic place with my dad's Alzheimer's Mm -hmm. because it was such a tough journey but this learning about the mind this positivity you can't actually be negative while you're studying it it's like you your mind gets rewired into this like glass half full all the time and you you find yourself reframing even the most negative situations and I really reframed my trauma yes. which was wonderful so yeah uh, Marissa Pierce got a, a, a done a lot of good <laughs> yeah she had a huge impact on me too hence why I'm you know taking the course now too and you know wanting to up level because I've been in hypnotic communication and you know getting the benefits of it from so long and now I'm like I'm really ready for this so yeah what was so you would, when was the first time that you experienced hypnotherapy I know you had a lot of things that showed you the power of your mind and everything else but when did you actually get into hypnotherapy so the first time was when I was doing my NLP qualification and we were like practicing hypnotherapy with each other and um so I had this really terrible habit of, of picking my skin okay um now this was like normal hypnotherapy it was actually the American board of hypnotherapy that I learned my NLP because it was Tad James as NLP and it was really powerful stuff we did storytelling where the other person interviewed you and you gave them things you were passionate about. So he actually created three stories for me based on things that I loved. And it was like a process of going down steps of the story 
and beginning the story and then taking it like an end in each story so you'd go like beginning of story one two three end of story one two three like this and then in the middle of the stories would be the hypnotic suggestion and he did it for my skin picking um and it was actually brilliant and it lasted for a little while and then it it started again mm -hmm. I was like oh how strange and I'd heard a few people talk about that like having hypnotherapy and it being strong for a little while and then sort of fade in. Do you know whether have you heard that with your experience of, of hypnotherapy as well? There are definitely yeah. some times when in traditional mm -hmm. hypnotherapy, it would feel like a relief for a bit and then it would come back. And I guess before I knew what I know, I just kind of thought that's how it eh, just how it's supposed to be. It's only so good or whatever. But, you know, even with, you know, being an EFT master practitioner, understanding like you haven't gotten to the root yet. You just haven't really gotten into the subconscious mind and really rooted out the the beginning causes of it. I always kind of think about it like a, a row of dominoes kind of set up. And, you know, if you can knock over that one that's the furthest back, then you have the most success at not repeating whatever it is in the in the present time. But yeah, I've, I've had some yeah. more similar things. And you've I know a lot the, of, yeah. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head for me. So it's really interesting when you're mentioning EFT, like that's brand new to me, EFT. I've only just discovered it. And I'm like, oh, that feels so good. I, I love anything to do with your energy, your meridians, your chakras. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. I think what was happening with that surface level hypnotherapy is that it was working um, because it was like exciting the mind in that moment. And then it was like the root was still there. So what was hap had, had happened with me, it had really excited my mind and the hypnotherapy that I learned was really good. But like the real root, the reason I picked my skin had not been uncovered. It had just been like, plastered over like a right, sticking right. plaster and then when you talked about EFT then that really sort of brought it home to me because you you, you need to remove the actual block don't you and that was yeah. the, the yeah. missing piece for me with the traditional stuff I was doing so with the stuff with the RTT I decided like now I'm, let's try again let's get rid of the picking because it, it is a real problem I mean it looks like I've got chicken pox when I'm in a bad way with it so we did this session when as and I was practicing with another student and I was like, you know, I would love it if you could stop me from picking. Like I've tried before, I went back to it. So he did this session with me. And when we went back, because with RTT, Marissa takes you back, you go back and you regress. And then you go to like the inner child, really. So you go back in time. So the child, me, the, the age I was when I picked the picking of the skin up was really young so it was very far back in time so I needed that to be released in order for my future self to be healed and I'd created the skin picking as a protection in order to safeguard me from a situation that was causing me pain in my youth and once it was and I identified and I could let it go which with EFT, you let you let this stuff go, mm -hmm. don't you? And with Reiki, you you, you let that energy yeah. flow and then go. It was like that was a, an amazing thing for me, and that's where RTT was just like this is fabulous. Like this is going back and letting people like let go and and let things out that they've been holding on to that are not serving them. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I know like you know, in age, it's so common for people to, you know, get a medication in order to feel safe enough to actually talk about whatever the thing is. And I think that's one of the things I love about uh, EFT, about Reiki, about hypnotherapy is that like, I love to say that like I can use EFT with myself or with my clients in a way that's like a Band-Aid, which I would compare to like the medication kind of taking the edge off, or yeah. I can use it for like that deep wound clean out and really get to the root of it. But, and the same is true with hypnotherapy or, or Reiki, um, but I like that you can use the same thing in both ways. You don't need anything additional and you can get to the root of it and you can be made more comfortable getting to the root of it with the same practice just applied in a little bit of a different way 
So, and I love the way that both of them, all of them get to speak to the inner child because that inner child of ours has a lot to say and needs a lot of acknowledgement and love still and needs to be, you know, upgraded into our current day existence and everything else. And so few people are actually taking, uh, having the consciousness and ability to do that for themselves. I really agree with you. I think one of the most powerful things is the inner child work. And I, that, I mean, that's given, that's released me from fear of flying, from picking my skin. It's helped me with my endometriosis pain, you know, like massively helped with that. It's, it's really done so much for me, that inner child work. So I, I do little um, work, I do little workshops for well-being. And um, one of the things that I do is I ask people to bring a picture of them when they're like a cute child I'm like you know either a baby or a toddler just this gorgeous picture that there's no denying that you're cute and that picture you know not one where you're covered in ice cream and you think that you look gross a really good picture and then what I say to them is okay like think of the worst thing that you say to yourself on a daily basis like repeating over and over again something really negative you say to yourself and then I'm like say it to that child and everyone like oh no no I couldn't say it to that cute gorgeous child and I'm like that's you (laughs) yeah Yeah. that's awesome and you know I know that pain and grief are topics that are are near and dear to you is that what you tend to help people with the most or do you have other specialties in the work that you do yeah my main things are like yeah pain and grief because the the journey of Alzheimer's is is so painful and it is it's very very hard grieving for somebody that's alive like that's so so challenging so yeah that those areas of grief you know like grieving in general for somebody but also grieving for somebody that's still with us um but I've also like really niched as well into fear of flying because I used to be like terrified of flying like if you said to me oh come and visit me over in America I'd be like oh no I couldn't do it as wonderful as it'd be um but I've yeah I've I've used the RTT to now like I mean I'm I'm gonna go to Mauritius like at the end of March and that would have just <laughs> been like unreal so fear of flying is one of my real niches because I, I totally understand how people feel you know, when people go, oh, it's the safest way to travel and it's more dangerous being in a car or a train or a bus. It, none of that works. Like, none of it makes you feel better. It's your, your, flight or, your fight or flight have kicked in. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's, it, we it's, know it's, most of the things that are our problems on a logical level, like that they really shouldn't be a big deal, but it probably wouldn't have helped you at all if somebody just said, hey, stop picking your skin, Lisa, or just yeah. hop on the plane. It's going to be cool. Like, it's going to be fine. That's not going to make it better for you on an emotional or a nervous system level. And that's the stuff that's like all fired up. Exactly. And it's that so I've got so much empathy for people when they're afraid of flying because I know how it feels and it's so physical it's this you know when you have the sweaty palms and you're going hot in your face and I mean my knees used to knock together when we took Ooh. off and I'd be saying safest way to travel safest way to travel safest way to travel I'd say it for the full flight I'd have my fingers crossed for the full flight every bit of turbulence I'd be looking at all of the cabin crew so at that that's been a real niche of mine because releasing people and freeing people from that horrible phobia because it's so like I love flying now like I laugh on the plane and you know I really enjoy watching movies with my family and you know thinking oh we'll have some Pringles (laughs) Um, but it's that's what I want for the people so that's become one area and fertility because I'm just super passionate about really helping people to have the family that they just desperately want as well so yeah there there are a few of the really key areas that that I I work on but I cover all fears and phobias and I'm I'm a big fan of working with people when they have OCD as well Mm -hmm. um I've worked with some fabulous people who it's just been so liberating for them to because OCD is is their way of keeping safe and when that's removed, when you go back in time and you find what's making someone feel so unsafe and you can help them to release that, 
then it's just truly liberating. So, Absolutely. yeah. That's do you work one. with adults only? Do you work with children? Do you work with, what ages do you work with? So I do just focus on adults um, at the moment. Um, I can work with children, but I've really just focused on adults, um, mm-hmm. apart from my own kids. <laughs> anything that how, how open are your own kids to the kind of work you do because you do uh first I guess say um I know you're a hypnotherapist and you're also qualified to do Reiki as well right what other modalities do you focus with yeah so I've got so I'm also a transformational mindfulness coach the very my little one's very open to mindfulness so he's only eight and he will literally come and stand we've got a big tree in the garden So we go and stand by the tree and we just have some morning tree mindfulness where we just look at the tree. So he's great with mindfulness. And when he was really little and he used to hurt himself and I used to rake him, he used to say, don't rake me, don't rake me. (laughs) (laughs) And my daughter used to find it so funny. She'd be like, oh, you think that, you know, you're so like healing and then you go up to him and he's like, don't rake me. (laughs) But he's, he's pretty open to it now. He's got his, He's got crystals on his windowsill and he does mindfulness on a morning. Um, he's um yeah, he he's quite he's quite open to it all. Um my daughter's more like she's more like a dad, she's quite a logical, pragmatic person. So she's he, yeah, she's happy to have a bit of Reiki, definitely. Um, and happy to 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 rewire and reframe and reword. Um, but yeah, they've both had a little bit of uh, hypnotherapy. Um, my son, had, my son had it because he was having nightmares, and he was like, "Could you make me not be scared when I go to sleep on a night?" So we did it for that, and they, it worked. And he's he said, "Ever since I had my hypnotherapy, I feel great," and he goes to bed better. So that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so cool. How about your kids? Have you tried it with your kids? My kids will do EFT with me sometimes. Um, you know, the older ones know better, you know, when they get to a certain age, they just, you know, they don't want to do what mom's doing. What I'm doing is not cool, but the younger yeah. ones are still open to it. And I love that my almost, gosh, she's going to be six this weekend. My littlest guy's going to be six, um, but still five. And when he, you know, in these younger years, he's been very open to it. And sometimes like when we're taking a shower together or something, he'll, he'll be like, mommy, can we just sit down in the shower and do some tapping? I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> just, just sit down and do some tapping in the middle of the shower. And it's, it's, it's like some of my favorite memories. Just, he'll be like, this is what's bothering me. Let's work on it. Like, okay, cool. Aww. I'll do that with you. But, oh, I love yeah. that. I yeah. love that and especially at such a young age as well I always think they're quite they are quite open to it all when they're when they're younger aren't they but yeah they get a bit a bit more grumpy about it when they're older <laughs> yeah all those young ones are just so much closer to that which we came from that source energy that pure light and love and everything else I can't believe I don't have a super little one anymore that you know the littlest guy's turning six this weekend because we get a little further away from that but there's still so much of it in all my all of my boys I've got a six-year-old a nine-year-old a 12-year-old and a 17-year-old so we got a little bit of everything over here but yeah it's it's just it's awesome and I agree with you on that that like we what we do is like children we try to mold them and change them and teach them and actually we forget to learn from them so it's really important to learn from them isn't it because they're closer to perfection like where we came from and what we we should be striving to be I feel like I've like uh, becoming more me I feel like by becoming more me I'm becoming more like who I originally was Mm -hmm. um before I was tainted by the world as you do we thought we had to prove that we were something else yeah but actually like so learning for them just being a bit silly sometimes like we're meant to be silly like we dance around being silly on a Friday in the kitchen because like I I tend to only do hypnotherapy on a Friday like I don't do, I do training and coaching as well um so I'd spend a lot of time in offices training and coaching as well okay. um and on a Friday we just like have a dance around and be a bit silly Yeah, I learn a ton from my kids and they definitely remind me of what matters most and they remind me of why I do what I do and everything else. So I'm so grateful to have them and yeah, it's, it's just amazing. So, oh my goodness. What, um, what's a good place for people to find out more about you if they're interested in learning about the kind of coaching and things that you offer? 
Yeah, so um, the, I'm terrible on Instagram, so I've only just got an Instagram, and it must be an age thing. My daughter was like, Mom, like, you've got to go on Instagram. Like, Facebook is so your age, and I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> well, wherever, so, wherever you are is where we want to send people. We don't want to send people where you aren't. Yeah, so my so the best thing is I, I'm good on LinkedIn. I've got loads of people on LinkedIn, so um, it's just um, Lisa Garner RTTP, and um, in is the LinkedIn one. Um, but I've also got a website which is lisagarnerhypnotherapy.com. So it's so easy to find, just my name and hypnotherapy.com. Um, and yeah, I am on Insta and I'm on Facebook, but yeah, not really. I don't. I don't really do enough on the social media marketing side, really. I should do more. <laughs> Sounds like you have a full schedule and you're doing what you love. And, you know, social media is intended to complement that, not to create more work for us, in my opinion, at least. I gave myself so much, you know, heck about, you know, what I did or didn't do on social media for so long. And now it's like, you know what? Some days I post something, some days I don't. But, yeah. you know, having a consistent podcast and lovely guests like you makes it easier to have awesome content to post and keep it quite simple for myself without having to do a whole lot, but that's awesome. I'll make sure that that's in the show notes. Um, other question. I'm curious what you've come up against with people as far as misconceptions about <laughs> hypnotherapy or being hypnotized. I've uh, answered this a lot on my own, but I'm always curious from, you know, one to another, what you, what you hear from people or what people think it's all about versus what it really is. Yeah, so a lot of people think, I mean, there is some terrible films out there, isn't there? And there's Las Vegas. Yeah, there's there's people pretending to be chickens on stages and things like that. That's what people see, don't they? So they see the stage show. And I always say, like, those people on the stage are highly suggestible people who want to behave that way. And I always say, like, you're subconscious mind would never do anything to hurt you like every fiber of who you are and in that subconscious mind is protecting you from any harm so that usually makes people feel a lot safer but I mean there is some shocking films I mean have you seen Get Out the one where <laughs> this guy goes to his his mother's um and um, he goes to his girlfriend's parents house and his his the potential mother-in-law is a, a hypnotherapist I have not hypnot- seen this movie I'm gonna have to look it up it's shocking so like she hypnotizes him and like makes terrible things happen and just like turns people into zombies and honestly it's shocking is this like so, a horror movie a comedy uh... so, yeah a really bad horror and I was watching <laughs> it going oh no and then there's one called hypnotize so there's a lot of negative stuff out there around hypnotherapy and I think that people say to, people say to me a lot like am I gonna be like in another world like and be able to see things as if it's like a movie and I'm like no that's not what it is it's like it's just a deep deep state of relaxation and all we're doing is we're quieting that frontal lobe so that that human rational that critical voice in your head is not like chattering away getting you to a very deep state of relaxation you're always in control and just so that you can connect to the the real the important part of you that that knows the answers and I just say like it just feels lovely and relaxing and it's you won't be freaked out I think even I, I even can remember that myself I don't know whether you can remember when you were first hypnotized but I I actually felt like I, I think I thought it was going to look like a movie <laughs> Yeah, I think the first times that I remember um, going into like trance state was with like self-guided type tracks like that you could find on like YouTube or some of like the things that maybe Marissa put out that like anybody could listen to kind of thing. And so it felt very safe because I was alone in the privacy of my own home, able to just kind of like do my own thing. And then I felt very comfortable going to see a hypnotherapist to kind of understanding what it was going to be like. But yeah, it's, it's not, if you've never been to see a hypnotherapist, I think it's worth exploring (laughs) because it's so much different from what anybody's thinking before they do it. Oh, it really is. And with certain people, like, so I've had clients who are really open to energy work. So, I mean, I I offer it to people like that. Like, I I wouldn't just, like, 
automatically combine the RTT with it. But right. I've got a couple of clients who are really open to energy work saying, do you know, I want hypnotherapy from you, but I'd also love to have Reiki. And um, so sometimes I use some of that, like in their session as well. Particularly powerful, you know, things like um, visualization of to remove this root cause, just like imagining like a magnet pulling little droplets of this shape and colour, like we learn in NLP, away to the magnet really gently and just replacing it with like golden healing light. So sometimes I'll use that energy work in it as well. Oh, I love that. I'm getting all over that. Just thinking about the possibilities of that. So yeah. I, see, for me, like just in my own personal work, I've really loved like seeing a hypnotherapist and then in between sessions when I know that things are doing their thing, you know, and kind of, you know, simmering in the subconscious mind and, you know, getting ready to make awesome things happen. And I still have like a certain amount of resistance to something or a certain inkling to, you know, still do something or what have you. That's when I'm kind of like using the EFT in between to just keep things calm while the seeds that have been planted start to grow. <laughs> and yeah. that has been really helpful for me and kind of how I'm envisioning the way it's going to be coming together for becoming more me later on this year when uh, it's fully integrated into what I offer. And uh, yeah, that'll be magical, actually, because that'll be like homework for them when they've had the session with you. And then they'd move on to like, it's a tool. It's a tool to take home, isn't it? To keep that process progress going so that'll be yeah. I think when you combine because I think all of these sort of healing disciplines like they're all there's something from all of them that's why I can't yeah. get enough yeah. of me I have to keep learning and then yeah. we had this guy who did the EFT and I was like this is one that I haven't done like and it, it's beautiful and I love it I think if you combine them I mean, you're in a really great place then, aren't you? Yeah. And there's nobody out there that's like anybody else. I mean, you've had your journey and you've collected all of these amazing healing modalities and the way that you get to weave it together and then produce um, a magical healing experience for your clients is like no other. And that's how I look at it too. Like all the time and money and uh, education that we've invested in that has become who we are makes what we have to offer as coaches, as therapists, its own amazing product of its own because there's just so much uniqueness that's woven into it. And then we have the blessing of being touched by every single client that we get to work with and transforming even more. I mean, I, I always, it's like a guilty pleasure of mine that at least with EFT, um, I don't yet know how this, I don't think this is going to work the same because hypnotherapy doesn't have the same kind of borrowed benefits, but EFT is scientifically proven to have these borrowed benefits. So as it works both with, with me, like if I'm tapping on myself and maybe I'm working on a headache, I'm still going to feel better in all different areas of my life, even for only focusing on that one. And when I'm working with a client, even if we're, you know, working on their childhood trauma or something, I'm going to feel better at the end of it too, because I'm tapping along with them and getting those borrowed benefits. And that's always like my, my guilty pleasure about doing that is that like after, you know, having, you know, been able to help someone else through their healing, they're helping me at the same time. And I love that reciprocation of, you know, being in the, in the field of healing work. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Cause it's giving and receiving like it's, this is an, another pillar of well being, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about those pillars and like, we talk about, you know, mental, physical, financial, social, all these pillars of well being, then yeah, that giving and receiving, like giving, is actually so good for your mental health and and then you're receiving back as well and it's just like a lovely part of life isn't it it's like the it's it's like it's meant to flow that way but I do you think the same with RTT whenever like regardless of what the client's situation and like what their presenting problem is whether it's something that I can totally relate to or it's something really different to anything I've experienced there's this release like there's this really lovely feeling and I'm I'm the same as you I like come away and I got my husband like you know I, I actually feel really, really good like I feel like all the positive because there's a lot of affirmation isn't there and there's like in the the transformation yeah. and this affirmation when you empower somebody else you empower yourself as well mm -hmm. yeah absolutely lovely yeah. so I think 
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and for sharing your story and another perspective on hypnotherapy, because I'm just eating it all up right now. And I will make sure that I have your website and all of the best social media places to contact you in the show notes for those who are interested in learning more about what you do. Anything you want to add before we wrap things up, Lisa? Oh, I just want to say a massive thank you. I've absolutely loved our conversation. It's been great. Me too. Thanks again for being here. And thank you all for tuning in and listening to Becoming More Me. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for listening. If you love this episode, please share it with a friend or post on social media and tag me so I can personally connect and thank you. Until next time, keep taking bold and brave action steps towards becoming more of who you want to be in this world. You are capable, you are worthy, and you are enough. Keep shining your light.